What's going on people? It is episode 5 of Boom or Bust, the show where you design tiny miniature subwoofer enclosures, I 3D print them and we throw them head to head to see whose is the loudest. Today's episode features this adorable little neuter shooter box sent in by Mitch. Now this as you can see is a regular ported enclosure however we have this kind of secondary chamber midway down the port that is actually wider inside. It's sort of widens into this almost like, like a exhaust silencer um, you're not trying to silence things here Mitch trying to make them louder but be interesting to see how this turns out now you could look at this in two ways you could look at it as a second chamber um, of the enclosure but really I think it's just gonna kind of behave like a widening of the port and because the widening and then going back down to a thinner port at the end is a harsh step it's a sudden change in the area of the port I think that might introduce quite a bit of sort of chuffing and eddy currents in the airflow. I don't know if it's large enough to act as a second chamber for the woofer here, but it'd be interesting to see nonetheless. The size of it is nice and small. It printed very nice and quickly. Uh, can't be said for some of the others that we've had so far submission wise, but yeah, very small. It's actually less internal volume than my original benchmark aeroported box here. Um, the port is a little, no, it's about the same size actually. But if you include this secondary chamber, I'd say it's a bit longer and it kind of curves around into the back of the box here. Really cool looking little box. No idea how it's going to perform though. I suspect that we're going to absolutely be able to throw the full 15 watts into it and it's barely going to even get started. So this might work better when we can crank up the power in a future season where we have a woofer that can take 30 to 50 watts or something like that. But um, I'd love to see how it does and what the effect of this kind of secondary chamber has on the response so first things first as always let's crack open the DATS V2 throw it on an impedance sweep and see what the graph looks like Yeah, this is fantastic to see, especially coming from last week. We had the Omiramid, which was a massively large, high-tuned enclosure. This is a stark contrast, and the graph shows us why. We can see already that we are tuned closer to the woofer's FS than the Omiramid was by the fact that we have the two peaks at a similar-ish height with the valley somewhat more in the middle here. Also, this graph tells us that the box is much smaller because, firstly, the initial impedance spike down here at 72 hertz, where the box starts to unload, the port stops working, and the front and rear waves of the, of the woofer meet each other and cancel out, is actually lower than the upper impedance peak here at 253, 255 hertz, where the air spring starts working in phase with the cone's movement. So the fact this first peak is lower means that even when the woofer's unloaded, the box is still kind of small enough that there's a bit, bit of pressure going on inside there to really kind of limit the excursion. And with the box being smaller, the air spring will have more of an effect on the cone's excursion when it's resonating with the frequency that the driver's playing. Thus, we get a much higher impedance spike at that kind of air spring mode there at 255 hertz. So, a little bit more detail then. Looks like we are tuned somewhere. I mean, there's a pretty flat line down here. We're tuned somewhere between 140. 40 hertz and 156, 157 hertz. Interesting that it's quite flat down there. There's not like an obvious peak to that valley down there. And also look, the minimum impedance read by the DATS was 3.7 ohms, which is much lower than the minimum impedance read with the Omiramid being so big, even when it was at tuning frequency, the, the impedance was still rising a fair bit. So this is actually looking fairly promising so far, especially for the lower frequencies. Like I say, 150 hertz is 25 scaled hertz, which is the bottom end of the frequencies that we test. So if the port is tuned down there, it's going to perform well. And the fact that we have more air spring, um, we're going to have better cone control, I think, on the higher frequencies up at sort of 360 hertz, which is 60 hertz when scaled. So provided the box isn't so small that we can't put enough power into it to get it going, it might perform really nicely. Now, interestingly, what I'm not seeing is any difference in the shape of this graph as a result of this kind of second chamber here within the port. There's not a secondary impedance peak or anything 
anything really going on here. There's a couple of tiny bumps on the way up. We got one here at 758 hertz, another little one up here at about um, 1.2 kilohertz, and another one up here at about 2.4 kilohertz. I don't really know if that's got anything to do with this port chamber here resonating or causing any effects there, but um, uh, yeah, it's looking like a regular ported box type response. And um, provided it offers good cone control on the higher frequencies being tuned so low, it should perform as well as or better perhaps than my benchmark error ported at least. Yeah, so the graph looks good, but I think the first thing I want to do is listen to it outside of the cabin just to see if there's any insane port noise going from this kind of like thinner tube at the back, expanding and then thinner again on the front. Let's have a listen. So 25 scaled hertz is going to give us the most port displacement. Let's just see if it's really noisy or not. Oh, oh it has a weird resonance to it. It has like a... Oh. Oh, it sounds horrendous. <laughs> yeah, listen, listen to how it changes when I cover slightly the port. It's it's like it's like you've got something in your mouth and you're going wow wow wow. <laughs> oh my god, it's horrendously noisy. It is it is oh it is like a hurricane of chuffing sound. I tell you what, it moves some freaking air though. Let's just get this bit of sellotape. Yeah, sorry Mitch, sounds absolutely awful. I mean, it might perform fine, it might make some loud simos, but God, that's gonna be horrible to listen to in, in real life. I want to see what that weird harmonic looked like on the screen. So I cracked open REW and had a look firstly at the scope and you can see here how the shape of the wave looks a little bit distorted. It's not a nice clean sine wave, it has something else going on. And then I decided to block the port off to just kind of turn this into a little sealed box. And you can see that instantly the sine wave cleans up a bit. I mean, it's not perfect by any means, but it could just be the driver distortions or the box or the room. The room, it does reverberate a fair bit. So, but it's definitely not got as much distortion as it has with the port open like this. I also had a quick look at the RTA bar graph and you can see there is this other kind of frequency coming through around about 750-ish hertz there I think. And when we seal off the port this goes away although we do introduce a couple of other harmonics that could just be harmonics coming off the driver or the room like I said not too sure but this 750, 780 is definitely something to do with the port resonating. If we go back to the scope screen, what's even more interesting is if I put my hand around the port here, my finger wrapped around it to extend it, I guess, a little bit, it actually cleans up the sine wave even further. So I think that the resonating harmonic is going on in that last little bit of the port there, the last little tube coming off the, uh, the smaller chamber. And by putting my finger there, I'm extending the length of that, therefore changing the frequency that this harmonic would occur. But yeah, interesting. So with the science out the way, let's throw it in the test cabin and run some bass demos some tracks, bassy tracks, and see how it actually sounds in there.
ass is epic though So now comes the fun part. What does this do on the meter between 25 and 60 scaled hertz? So we're gonna start off as always with the door open on the cabin here with 25 scaled hertz being a 150 in real life. We're gonna increase the gain here until either we reach 15 watts on the watt meter or mechanical excursion limit, but I doubt that's gonna be an issue on this episode. So let's crank it up till we see 15 watts on the watt meter and see what kind of DBs we'll push in. Actually, not as loud as I was expecting, a 138.6, hmm. I did overshoot a little bit, there was 16 watts on the watt meter there, so I'm gonna do it one more time, and I'm gonna calibrate 15 watts because I don't wanna give it an unfair advantage. There we go, 15.2 and a 138.2 dBs. So it's quite a bit down on the other loud designs we've had so far, being my benchmark error ported and the, uh, the half wicked one. So, although not all that surprising, given that this enclosure is absolutely tiny. So we probably need a bunch more power to get it up to where the others are at. Okay, let's try 33 scaled Hertz now. <laughs> Fifteen point six and a one thirty four six. All right, so nice and flat so far. Probably due to the smaller size of the enclosure here. Next up, we have a forty five scaled hertz. Mm -hmm. 133.1 again pretty flat and lastly 60 scaled hertz a 129.4 so yeah relatively flat um, but it doesn't have that massive peak at 25 scaled hertz that the uh some of the other enclosures we've tested have had so that's going to really drag it down in the averages let's now close off the cabin with the door and let's see what it does with the cabin sealed off cabin now sealed so no helmholtz mode to help this out what's it doing at 25 you can hear that poor noise it's awful 15 watts, oh, 127.3, hey, it was really relying on that Helmholtz mode of that cabin there to get above the 130 mark. Does it improve as we edge closer to the quarter wave mode of this cabin with a 33? Again, it sounds like a hurricane in there. That was 15.8 uh, watts, so a little bit high, but 129.7 there. So yeah, it's a little bit of an increase as we get closer to the quarter wave mode. Now 45. 
a 131.0. And lastly, 60 scaled hertz. One twenty-seven point three. So how does that stack up on the leaderboard then? We have a 133.83 dBs average with the door open and with the door closed we have a 128.83 putting the Nuta shooter just below my benchmark error ported is very close actually with the door closed um, about a couple of dBs off with the door open but above the Omiramid. So yeah not the worst performer we've seen here but it is a very small enclosure and I don't think that this expanding port chamber thing is doing it any real favors. I think the eddy currents are probably getting in the way a little bit, causing a load of chuffing sound and uh, reducing the efficiency of this box. Although I must admit, it's probably one of the best looking ones we've done so far. If you want to have a crack at designing a weird ass enclosure like this, then there is a link in the description to a video that explains all of the instructions you will need to design something and submit it for this series. Uh, there's also an email address in the description as well if you want to get in touch regarding any kind of sponsorship, like a sponsored sticker, message or segment in these videos, get in touch, let me know. But yeah, get designing if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next one. Listen to how cute Naruto Sadness and Sorrow Rebase sounds like spread up. Thank you.